video, I'm going to go over a few examples of how to do image compression um, and really get the file size of your image much smaller by just doing a few techniques that are relatively easy. Um, really the first thing to go over would be um, the differences between different types of files. And I, I normally work with the web, so I'm going to go over uh, four different types of files. So um, let's go ahead and open up our save for web. Now to do this, you're going to go up to file, which actually isn't in the video. You're going to go to file and you can go to save for web. I always use this shortcut. So uh, when you see me do this, I never very rarely like click on this. Um, I really only use the shortcut because it's much faster. So there's um, a few things. Um, we're not going to worry about the um, WBMP. Uh, so that's very rarely used. I personally never use it. Um, I also never use PNG8. Um, I feel that if you're going to use PNG8, might as well just use GIF because that's going to be smaller. So this is almost obsolete. I, um, I never see a use for it. Uh, I guess technically there are use cases for it. I just always just go straight to the PNG 24 if I need the quality of PNG uh, comes with. Anyway, the, the first example uh, would be JPEG. And the reason why you're using a JPEG is really because you have a simple image, it's your go-to image file format, and um, it doesn't have transparency. So let's say a slider image, use a JPEG. It could be big, it could be small, uh, it's a good overall file. The next uh, most popular one is a PNG file. And a PNG files tend to be um, very nice. Um, in image compression, um, way, way down low, there's like these two different types of file compressions. There's Lucy, there's lossless. Um, PNG is using a lossless, whereas a JPEG is using a Lucy. Um, and really the difference between a lossless and a Lucy is um, one, you're actually losing data, and one, you're not. So PNG, you're getting all that data, and it's going to look nice no matter what. Um, and we're going to go into a little more, and that's why like in, in JPEG, you have this like quality meter, whereas in PNG, you don't. And it's taking a little while to to actually get going. This uh, image is actually fairly large, and then uh, so when I transfer to a PNG, it takes a bit of time. You can see there's no quality right in there. Um, the other format is GIF. Now I really only use GIFs for two reasons. One, I want to get a file size so small, don't care about quality, maybe a couple pixels, maybe an icon, for example. Uh, something very, very easy. Something where it has limited colors, so maybe a logo that I want to really get nice. Um, even though logos, I usually use a PNG. Um, and GIF's also good for animations. Uh, you see that all over the web for animations because the other file formats don't have that. Now, um, the most obvious way to um, adjust file size is the image size. So let's say you have um, a large image, you're going to have uh, a large file size. Now if you're using something on the web, um, you might not need to have a like three, uh, like 3800 width. You might only need a, I don't know, 600 width. And you can see that when I do this and I press enter, you can see the file size comes dramatically down. And of course that's like definitely a very obvious thing, propping the image down to the right size. Smaller the image size, um, the smaller the file size would be. The next thing I would like to go over is really how to optimize your image in this to um, to show you, uh, like to remove certain things and to get the file size down. One is, let's say you're using this as a background. You might not need as much detail. And of course, this is gonna look weird, but just to demonstrate the point, 
let's go ahead and make a new layer. We're going to just make this big white square. Now, this means there's a lot less data in here. So now when I go over and save it, you can see that my image size came from about 7.4 megabytes bits to um, 5.2, or I mean uh, 2.5, sorry, which is dramatically less, and it's because there's really less data. All this data is the same, significantly less information here, meaning our file size can actually come down. Now, a lot of times people take this to um, an extreme level and start removing things here and there. So let's say you have a picture of a person, like a headshot with a white background, literally moving all the little dust and elements around it, maybe a stray here, will remove the file, will get the file size down just a little bit. Now, of course, we're not going to do it here because it's going to be hard to get that to be perfect. Um, the next thing to do is um, ways to remove more data. You can actually turn it black and white. Let's go ahead and turn this black and white just so we can see the file difference. Remember, we started with 7.4. And we get this down an entire 3 uh, megabytes, down to 4.4. Now, sometimes you want to just remove a little bit of, of data. So we can actually get like a kind of a halfway point. And since there's still less data here, you can see that we actually get about a megabit of sa uh, saving. So you can get a nice little halfway point if maybe you don't need as vibrant of an image. Um, so the, the next thing would be actually the JPEG quality. Now let's go ahead and remove that, get the full image in here. Now the first thing is a very easy thing to explain is the progress. This actually makes the file size um, go down sometimes and you can actually adjust little things here and there and mess with it. Um, the progressive is um, versus non-progressive. If you ever notice on the web, some images move or load from the top to the bottom and some um, load progressively and they start as a very pixelated and then they become better quality, better quality, better quality. And that's because some images are progressive and some aren't. And that's definitely a, just a JPEG thing. Now you can adjust the quality over here and I use this tool a lot. Um, sometimes 30 is a nice image size. And you can't really even tell that the image went down in quality. You can see the image size definitely went down from 7.4 down to 1.1. Now if I get down to like a uh, quality of one, you start to really notice like some issues and maybe you can't see them on the YouTube video, but it's not as clear in these clouds. Whereas when I change it to 100, the maximum, it becomes much more clear and the image becomes much more vibrant and we're gonna pay for that. So whenever I'm doing a slider on a show, on a website, I always use this tool just to get it down to be exactly what I want. Now, um, the next thing uh, we're gonna talk about is we're gonna do a few different comparisons. And we're gonna use um, two tools that I really strongly recommend. Um, one's called TinyPNG and the other is called TinyJPEG. They're made by the same people, same developers. Um, they did a really nice job with it. The This is using um, something called a PNG Quant, I believe, or Quant PNG, um, I forget. It's a Unix script, It's a, or Linux script, it's really nice. Um, I um, really enjoy using it for when I need to compress things on more of an application level and make sure that when a, someone uploads it. Anyway, that's more of a develop more conversation. This uses that behind the scenes, very easy to use. And we're gonna test it out by simply saving our, our image. We're gonna get a big image just so we can have uh, 
a more significant test. And we're going to save this as a JPEG. And replace that one I already saved. And we're going to save the same image again as a PNG. This might take a while because it's such a large PNG. Um, when it recodes this into PNG, uh, Photoshop does take a while. And I also have a very fast Mac. So you can imagine that it's such a large thing. And you can see the file size went dramatically up when it changed to PNG. Now, by the way, um, while I save these, um, PNGs really, um, I really only use them for uh, mainly uh, transparent images, images that need to be transparent, because they do come with a larger file size and everything else I use for a JPEG. The other reason why you should use a PNG is for images that need very crisp lines, like logos. Even if you're using one that's not transparent, it's nice to get that that crispness, crispness that comes with it. We're going to go ahead and upload each one of these. And we're going to start with tiny PNG first. We simply drag our image into here. Oh, it looks like our file size is too big. So let's go ahead and um, redo this. and get this down to be a, a smaller file size. We need to use 1000. And we're going to do the same thing with JPEG. and make this 1,000 as well. So now that we're within our file size, let's go ahead and upload this. It's now uploading, and it tells us right away how much it compresses it. And you can see that we actually saved 75%, and we get the same exact image. Now, um, if you compare this image with uh, this, you can see that there's not even, like, you, there's no visible difference between the images. Um, it's very difficult to tell. If you looked very, very closely, maybe with like a microscope, you might be able to see some differences here and there. But the reality is, is that they're so minor um, that this tool is just very, very nice. Now you can do the same thing with JPEG, of course. And if I upload this, you can see that I now get a savings of about 64%. Now every image is going to be different uh, because sometimes you can't uh, file size, you can't get the file size uh, down much more. But I'm very satisfied with uh, Tiny PNG and Tiny JPEG. I think they, they really do a nice job. And with combination of everything else, it's um, really nice. Um, and these are definitely great tools for the non-vector images. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to my, my YouTube channel. And uh, let me know how I did. So please comment. Talk to you soon.